Okay, let's get started. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Um, welcome. Welcome to the Southside TNT Common Council Forum. And we um, are very excited that you're here. I'm Angela Wright. I'm the chair of the Voters Task Force along with my um, assistant chair, Charles Ellis Pierce. I'm sure you guys know him from the community. But um, thank you all so much for coming tonight to the first of uh, three forums that we are conducting. The first is the Common Council and the Common Council at Large, um, in addition to our mayoral candidate uh, forum tomorrow, June 1st, same time here. And then we're following up on June 8th for our city court judges and our Board of Education candidates. So thank you all so much to comment, for coming. Please get excited. Tonight is going to be a wonderful night of uh, information gathering. Um, and this event, the purpose of, of holding this event is one, to definitely bring um, awareness to the community and put the power in your hands to meet and greet the candidates, to know who's running, um, also to identify our issues, to let the candidates know what, um, what our issues are, what, you know, what we care about in this community. Um, and in addition, this is not a debate. This is a friendly forum, um, and we are giving the candidates a platform to hear their feedback, and we welcome you at the Q&A portion of the agenda um, to come up and, and, and have a Q&A with the candidates too, okay? So thank you all so much for coming. Again, we thank the candidates that responded and that are here, um, and that gives the, the community a chance to connect, and that's so very important. So we welcome you. Let's give ourselves a hand of applause so we can get the energy going. Thank you. So, you know, to start off, I just want to give a couple of thank yous. Uh, a lot of people helped us putting these forums together. It took a whole, literally a whole community. Um, you know, community on the ground work is not easy. I'm sure our reps can attest. I'm sure our task force leaders can attest. And just even um, the folks who attend the monthly meetings and contribute and engage. So we thank you so very much for your hard work because it's important that we all work together and we collaborate because I think the main thing, um, whether we are a candidate or an elected official or a community member or a resident or a homeowner is that we care for a better life across the city of Syracuse. So if something affects us on one side, it affects us on all sides. So it's so very important that we come together and we work together and we collaborate. So we welcome that. Um, we want to definitely give a thank you to CNY Solidarity Coalition, our community task force, uh, the South Side TNT. Uh, Ms. Camille Oakley, please give her a hand because without her, <laughs> Um, none of this would be possible. She works very hard, diligently every day. Um, I always joke that we don't get home till 8.30 at night, so our social life is out the window. That's another thing. <laughs> so welcome, thank you all so much. I'm going to hand it over to our moderator tonight, um, to Mayor Tehran. So, welcome. So we're gonna have a slight deviation from the schedule. We do have our at-large candidates in the building we're going to deviate slightly from the schedule, but let's get down to business. Um, if we can have all of our common council candidates come up, uh, we're talking about the 4th District representatives and also uh, the uncontested candidate running for the 3rd District. And how we'll do this is I'll give a short bio for each candidate, and I know you're here for business, so we will get started with questions shortly after that. <laughs> One quick announcement, there is a voter registration table on the side if anyone needs to, outside the door there, if anyone needs to register to vote and to gather information on voters right, that's what we're about as voter educations, please take advantage of that table outside. start off for this uh, to my left uh, Mr. Quante Wright. Uh, Mr. Quante Wright is a self-identified violence interrupter for Community Connections and he's a frequent speaker at anti-violence events. He sees that the city's biggest problem is poverty and he hopes to bring leadership and vision to city government and work to serve the people of his community. Uh, to his right uh, we have Ms. Susan Boyle and um, 
We initially didn't anticipate Ms. Uh, Boyle partaking in this totally because she she's running unopposed. So that's not to diminish her role here today. We definitely want to hold her as accountable as possible. <laughs> but if you want to give us your bio very briefly. Sure, my name is Susan Boyle. I am your current third district uh, representative um, and candidate. Um, I am the head of the education committee for the city uh, council. I'm also the president of the PTSO of Corcoran High School and the president of the RBI Baseball League that serves to revive uh, the sport of baseball in our inner city communities. Um, I'm really engaged with uh, the youth in our community, which is why they appointed me to the education committee. Uh, it's been uh, a good fit for me. Um, I've been working closely with the district <coughs> over uh, this past year, uh, two years, and uh, and I look forward to continuing to serve as the education committee chair. Uh, we've had some really great opportunities <coughs> this year to um, to work together as a council. We've been uh, a good group. I think we've um, all meshed and found the strengths in one another and have been able to maximize everyone's everyone's gifts that they bring to the table. And I like to do that. I like to look for you know the positive things that the other counselors have to offer and, and do the best that we can for the city. And uh, although I'm running unopposed, I'll have a bunch of new faces to work with next time uh, around. And I look forward to looking for the positive that they're going to bring to the table and creating uh, the best functioning government that we can have. All right, next we have Mr. Michael Green, who is a property manager for a commercial real estate company. Uh, he resides downtown after returning to Syracuse in 2016. Uh, he was in NYC, where he served as assistant vice president at the New York City Economic Development Corporation. He sees that the most important things that he can do is listen to the issues that matter and to provide a strong voice for the community in city governments. Uh, to my immediate left, we have Ms. Latoya Allen. She is the CEO and founder of the Precious Lillian, Lillian Brotherhood Foundation, which is a mentoring program for youth on the South Side. Her campaign is going to be focused on three things, neighborhood preservation, crime reduction, and job creation. So without any further ado, let's get a round of applause for our candidates tonight. get down to business. First question is, very simply, also, let's turn our attention to this lady, Miss Lori Covington. She's the most important person in the building tonight. Why? She's the timekeeper. So each <laughs> response must be limited to one minute. Please look at Miss Covington, and you know, if we need to cut you off, we'll just have to do that because we're on a truncated timetable tonight. So thank you, Miss Covington. All right, number one, this goes to Miss Allen. Why you, why now? Yeah, please. Why you, why now? Uh, why me, why now? I have, for the last two years, um, I've been training for this particular position. So I've made sure that I have been involved in my community, making sure that I understand your issues. Uh, and I, I hear the question a lot of, you guys want to know, we have to know what your issues are. But for what I need people to understand, especially on the South Side, is your issue is my issue. I live on the South Side. So anything that you're going through, more than likely I'm going through it as well. And I feel as if I'm the best person to represent the 4th District uh, here in Syracuse. With the 4th District, you have, to, you have to be very diverse, obviously, with the South Side, downtown, and the university area. Uh, I feel as if the knowledge that I've gained over the last two years puts me in the perfect position to represent everybody here in the 4th. <coughs> Um, hi, so first I want to start by thanking you guys for having us. This is a really cool event and it's really great to get the opportunity to meet all of you and you know, talk about our issues. Um, the reason I'm running is because when I look at the city and the 4th District in particular, I see economic development being a key piece of, of what we need to do to make the city a better place. And I look at the struggles we have in economic development as precipitating issues in other parts of the city. I mean, schools, some of the schools struggle because kids go home every night and they go to poverty at home. Our infrastructure struggles because we don't have a lot of, you know, taxes coming in to be able to pay for infrastructure upkeep. Um, 
So a lot of these issues, you know, there's vacant houses because people moved away to other parts of the country because they couldn't find work here. So a lot of these issues that seem unrelated um, are economic development issues. And with my background in economic <coughs> development, I think I'm the right person for that. Thanks. Let me see that you all. You don't have to. <laughs> well, why I me? Mean, why now? Is um, because I love this job. This is a perfect fit for me. I, I love working with my constituents, being engaged with the community. Um, it's it's where I want to be. It's how I spend my spare time. Um, when I'm not working, I'm working. So this is this is what I'm here for. I am a constituent services person, and that's what you need to expect from your district counselor. Somebody who's going to get back to you. Somebody who's going to hear you. Somebody who's going to meet with you and have coffee with you and, and take the time to hear what the issues are and try to find solutions. And that's why I'm here. Why me, why now? Change is now. Just me being at this table right now and just bringing something new to the city. I'm a familiar face, a Syracuse, born and raised here. And if anybody been following my story, I know the trials and tribulations I faced as a young man and even as an adult. But I didn't give up, I didn't quit, I didn't look back. And I see that our city is in, in, in dire need of a new leader. Yeah. We need to, um, the, the, the people need a voice. And I believe I can be the voice of the people. The youth need a positive role model. Um, and let them, let them know that there is hope. There, there can be a future here in Syracuse. You know, and I just wanna be that, that, that mentor. I wanna be that person that will be the leader of change. And as I said, change is now. We don't we don't gotta go to to the south. We don't gotta go to the west. We can live a prosperity life right here in Syracuse if the leaders are right and if the leaders do right by the people. And it's gonna take a collective effort for that to get done. And I believe me, being a person I am, I'm willing to work with all people at all tables and bring about a change from a collective perspective. All right, we'll stay with you, Mr. Wright. I want you to talk about your first six months in office. Not only how are you going to articulate your agenda, but how are you going to manifest it and make it into a reality? So if you can just walk me through, walk the audience through what the first six months of your term is going to look like. The first six months will look like trying to get everybody on the same page. You know, I believe that there's a lot of um, disagreement between the politicians that be in, in the places, the power that be right now. So my first six months will be trying to get everybody on the same page and, and, and get the message across that the, the people, the people's matter. To put all our political agendas aside, and we're gonna focus on what we can do to better the community. You know, we, you know, we gotta tackle economic development, our poverty issue. We all know the statistics, we rated number one amongst concentrated poverty amongst African Americans and Latinos. So just bring that collective effort. Uh, over the course of the next six months, I will be working hard with the rest of the council to try and identify uh, new and enhance new sources of income for the city. We're in a financial crisis right now, and um, I think that we are all on the same page with that so far as far as trying to find a solution and actively make decisions that, that are going to put us in a place to succeed. There will be hard decisions that have to be made in the next couple of years about, about the direction that our city is going to go. We need to find some revenue streams. We need to probably talk about consolidating or, uh, or uh, sharing some services. Uh, there's probably no way around that, and we need to go about that in a very uh, responsible way. We need to look very closely at what the options are. Um, we need to make some very difficult financial decisions. And I think that's how I'm going to spend the next six months uh, in office, is trying to, to get our city on track for success financially. Um, so first I'd like to say I am a huge nerd in terms of policy and stuff like that. So I have a lot of you know ideas of things I think the city would improve upon you know, if we were to implement them. Um, and I've been rolling them out gradually on what I've been calling Policy Fridays, where you can go on the website and greenforseries.com, different policy ideas. Um, with that said, I'm cognizant of what the role of a district counselor is, and you can't implement all of these ideas initially. Um, so I think in the first six, mo six months, what you're really doing is you're getting to know the community. You're going, you're meeting with neighborhood groups, you're going to TNT, you're, you're meeting with local businesses to know what they need. Um, so you can be, have your, you know, 
an understanding what the pulse of the neighborhood is so that you can really serve people. Um, so I think that's kind of you know what the role of a district councilor is, is to be a constituent services person. So you got to know your community to be able to do that. Uh, my first six months, I plan on doing exactly what I'm doing right now and exactly what I've been doing the last uh, few years. And that's making sure that I'm continuing to be active in my community, making sure that uh, I attend forums like this where I can listen to you and I can hear your concerns. Uh, and more importantly, just becoming more educated on how city government is ran. I feel like it's very important for us to be able to talk to our commissioners of each department so I will know exactly what their role is so I'll know what my role is when I'm working with them to make sure that you get exactly what it is that you need uh, since you are the ones that will put me in that seat. So I will continue to educate myself, make sure that I'm available to you so I can listen to your concerns and make sure that you know what I'm working on while I'm downtown on your behalf. All right, I want to pick up on something that Mr. Wright said. He mentioned that the community is suffering from some pretty severe economic challenges. He mentioned the, the statistic of uh, number one in concentrated poverty. So I'm going to start with Mr. Green to be fair this time. Think about some of the assets that are already in the community right now. How can we leverage those assets, particularly non-governmental assets, to address those challenges? So we'll start with Mr. Green, and then we'll jump to you, and then work our way down. Do you mean like physical real estate assets or just open-ended, any kind of assets? It's non-governmental. In other words, what are some non-governmental approaches that you see yourself engaged in to, uh, t to tackle some of these challenges, particularly the one uh, related to concentrated poverty? Yeah. So, I mean, I think right now you're seeing a lot of development in the city and you're seeing it in a couple neighborhoods. You're seeing it downtown and you're seeing it in the university neighborhood. And you're not seeing a lot of development on the south side. And I think... There's a couple reasons for that. One is because of the concentrated poverty here, the South Side gets a bad rap, some, you know, in my opinion, unfairly. So one of my roles, I think, if I were lucky enough to be the district counselor, is to be an advocate for this neighborhood, to go to people I know in the real estate community or in the investment community and say, there's awesome people down here, there's awesome physical buildings, and we need to invest in them, and we need to be able to help out with that. And then in terms of non-physical assets, you know, it's the community groups down here, whether it be the Southwest Community Center, whether it be other neighborhood groups, um, leveraging them to help out with the community to be able to, um, to help out with the poverty issue. Uh, anytime you're talking about uh, decrease in poverty, I think we need to start with the education. So uh, that's one of my main focuses, not just on the youth, but adult education to make sure that we have trainings in place uh, for adults to be able to go and become trained to enter the workforce. Um, I think that's one of the ways that we start to tackle the issue with poverty. Uh, people need jobs, but the jobs that are available, people need to have the proper training to actually uh, succeed in these jobs. Um, and then also just uh, connecting with different organizations that already exist and making sure that they're holding up their duty to the public and making sure that they're getting the word out as to what they have to offer us as far as jobs and trainings and any education that's needed. Education is a way that we remove ourselves from this situation. On the end, Mr. Yeah, I believe that the way out of poverty is education. You know, just speaking from my past experience, that's what helped me get past the things that I've been facing. So education and actually, you know, not just education in a formal sense, but entrepreneurship. I believe we need to grow more small businesses within our community, especially if you go down South Carolina and you get, you know, farther south on the south side, it looks desolate. <laughs> The housing, there's a lot of abandoned houses. I currently work as a real estate investor, so I got some leeway in trying to rehab some of these abandoned properties, which will give, I believe, will give a na the neighbors uh, a more sense of responsibility and holding up our community responsible for the things that, that take place in our community. And also, you know, just overall, just you know, coming together as a community and everybody working together to pull us up out of this, this strut we in. Um, looking at the assets 
um, non-political assets in the city of Syracuse, I would have to start with the Syracuse City School District. Um, I think it gets a bad rap sometimes. We always hear all the bad news. We rarely hear the good news. I am aware of the good news. Uh, we have 21 CTE programs, career and technology education programs that blow away what's offered in the suburbs. If you live in the city of Syracuse, you get free college at Syracuse University. And I know that now our state offers free tuition uh, for, for some people, but our SAS program is much more expansive than what's being offered in the state right now and still leaves us in a very attractive place. Um, you cannot beat the historic architecture and the historic parks in the city of Syracuse. Our assets are, are immeasurable. We have our yard debris picked up twice a year. Sometimes it's not always when we want it. But, uh, you know, we, we do have incredible services in the city of Syracuse. So to capitalize on those things, I think that we are all challenged with making sure that the, the good message gets out there. You know, uh, the media spends a lot of time trying to, to get hits on their website for promoting some of the negative things about the city of Syracuse. And I think that we can all work hard, um, as I have through the Cougar Pride campaign at Corcoran High School and through the Syracuse City School District, to, to try to promote and enhance those positive uh, programming. I want to piggyback on something that you just said and mentioned the twice a year yard debris pickup. And let's take this out of the rarefied air and bring it down to earth. Constituent calls you when you're in office and states that um, a local business will say, in this case, Family Dollar, uh, they're not cleaning up their property. How would you address this? We'll start. So we'll start on the end. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Well, being a common council, you 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 have the um, opportunity to reach out to to the city trash people, and I guess you, the best way to, to address that issue is to to go speak with the exact family dollar in the area that they're speaking of, and call it a, a forum, you know, bring the city people that got the complaints in. I lost the train of thought now. <laughs> threw me off. But yeah, so that's that's pretty much, you know, just call the form and have individuals come in and try to resolve the issue. Mr. Green next, please. <clears throat> so um, in the times I've been to TNT Southside, Family Dollar has been the wrath of many people for this exact issue, right? Because they're consistently not doing a good job keeping up their property. So I think First of all, let's take a step back and say, what are the kind of businesses we want in our community? And the most that we can, we should try to be promoting local businesses that hire people in the community that care about the community. And so far, Family Dollar has not been like that. They've just not cared about this community, and so that's one thing. Second thing is, for this particular issue, you've got to have a relationship with, with the business, call the owners and say, look, you're not doing a good job, we need to do better. And if they continue to not do it, you can hold a press conference in front of it, invite the media and say, look what this